All right, man, and we're live. Uh, Welcome to NerdFlow Podcast. This is issue 158 of NerdFlow Podcast, the Halloween edition. Also, in addition, the affiliate celebration, you could say, because we just hit affiliate. So uh, we do have a sub button now. So if you do have Twitch Prime, uh, I mean, if you have Amazon Prime, uh, you can get a free sub on the channel also. Um, What's up, y'all? What's up? Happy Halloween! Yes, indeed, and it's on a Saturday, and the worst possible year of the century. <laughs> exactly. That's why I said Halloween fell on a Saturday. Like any other time, it'll be on a weekday or a Sunday, which makes it trash all the way around. And now the weekend it falls on a Saturday. Which we probably won't see this for another five years. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the that's the, the stupid part about it. That is the stupid part about it. Um, some of us are in costume. You see a dark. You see two dark squares over here. I wish they would just light up. You know. See what? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. And then we got this this top. What is this? The top. If you're looking at, there we go. We got Young over here. Sif loading it up. Jedi, not Sif. <laughs> yeah, I know how we do. And Freddie over there. In the we, have, we, we have we have over here. It's Freddie, but. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Yes, sir. And we got uh we got dope over here with the S curl. Can't hear you, dope. Oh, hear you! Oh, hear you, dope. He got his mic muted. <laughs> like he been talking all before the show. Now his mic muted. The whole time. I said it's a it's a bayang, dudes. Come on. Well, I mean, what are we talking about here? <laughs> Not the bayang. Yeah, so man, uh, how you about a week, been, man? Uh, man, mine was great, man. My mom gave me my birthday gift early. I've been playing with that. Went over the there week? and helped her out. And she dropped a nice little something in my lap. When your birthday? Next month, fourteenth. About by what? Three more weeks. Yep. Yep. You jealous, right. aren't you, Quinn? You ever hear this conversation about birthday gifts again? <laughs> <laughs> Quinn never gets birthday gifts. We're going to get him something for his birthday, God damn it. Uh, apparently, he doesn't get birthday gifts. <laughs> apparently. We're going to get him a bayang for his birthday. How <laughs> the hell we ain't? It's just like Avery hey, got goddamn cake soppers. <laughs> they would drag, bro. Like, we in the do I break bake cakes? Like, now you mad at cakes? <laughs> Hell, I'm gonna do with a cake topper. <laughs> it's like, hey, bro, you want these twenty dollar uh, Dragon Ball Z cake toppers? Nah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me see. Like a spicy Funko Pop, they go on cakes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but all right, man. Um, if you're new to the sh- if you're new to the podcast or just listen to it for the first time, we are a podcast that's all about. Uh, all things pop culture, all things fandom. So that includes anything from like anime, video games, uh, pro wrestling, um, TV shows, movies, superhero stuff, you name it. We talk about it on this show. Uh, this is issue 158. I don't know why the hell I thought we were 159 this week, but that's just me. Uh, I'm tripping. Um, no, but we also, oh, I know, right? I'm trying to get to 160 for some reason. Um, but yeah, we also Four got a. Yeah, two more weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks. No, I said 41 weeks from uh, our 200th episode. Yeah, we got to do something for that. I don't know. I don't know where that falls at, but I don't know. That's like going to be like in the summer. Feels like that feels like summer 2021. <laughs> yeah, now, now, imagine just I don't know if this is really I would have to have to count, but imagine if 2021 coming Palooza who were always there and 200 lands on the weekend of coming Palooza. Just saying. I oh, like that. This is the 
last week in October, right? Uh huh. So it's four weeks and now we are about nine months away from forty one weeks. Oh, so it's been two weeks in a year. Oh, okay. So it'll be like in what? Probably oh. probably August or something. Huh? August, yeah, it'll be like August or something. Okay. I was hoping and wishing. Um, but yeah, man. So we got, uh, of course, we have social medias. So it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, all that will be in the bottom of the about on if you're watching us on Twitch. If you're listening to us on um, whatever podcast platform of your choice, it'll be in the description of the show. You can follow uh, by searching Nerdflow and Nerdflow Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we also have Nerdflow art popping off as well. So any dope cosplays or any type of like, anime style or just superhero type art that you see you can shoot it our way nerdful podcast at gmail.com uh still itching and working our way towards uh the official url for our youtube channel i think we're like 85 four, six, something like that uh subscribers um all the shows go live video version and a audio version of nerdflow podcast hits the podcast stream um the video version is probably about an hour or so after, and then the audio version is like literally a couple minutes after we're done. Listen to it on the Nerdflow Podcast uh, YouTube channel. We also have a Facebook community in addition to that, too. Uh, you can go over there and join in the community. We have, we've had we've had a lot of uh, new members lately, man. So shout out to y'all for joining the community as well. Um, so... I know I don't have a set schedule, so I just jump on and stream like every day on the Nerd Flow page. I didn't stream today, but you know, I'll be on there tomorrow morning. Finishing up Jump Force. Are you are you been playing through the story, Jump Force? Yeah, I'm playing through story. Okay. I'm on like chat. Uh, check check messenger too, uh Rawson. Okay. Uh let's see. Oh, it is. Mm. All right, I see what's up. Um, let's see what else, man. Um, then, in addition to that, we also got um, t-shirts. Uh, Teespring.com is where we have our merch store at. You get fifty percent off Nerdful t-shirts. NF twenty twenty is where you can uh, check out uh, the Nerdful t-shirts and save some fifty percent off on t-shirts. And we also have superhero stuff affiliate program with those guys. Link will be in the description of the show. You're, so, what's up? We, we need to change that code. We don't need that. We don't need to say nothing to feel in 2020. <laughs> this has been the most trash. You skip it, 2021. <laughs> this has been the most. As, as long as 2021 come, don't come in and ask 2020 to hold my beer, I'm good. I want a boring <laughs> ass here next year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I want nothing going down. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's kick I mean, it off. I do, we'll be in Chad week in the same year and expect the year to just go by great. It's very true. I mean, the fact that you know it kicked off. Boy, I'll tell you one thing the year in review show in December, boy, we're gonna need uh, that might be a, a, a two part show. We can't cover it all in one episode. I, don't, I feel like we can't. Did anybody else feel like this month just came by? Like, yep. yes, and I'm glad I'm ready to get this shit over with. You <laughs> utilize paychecks as a time uh, scale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using paychecks. Like, all right, uh, all I know is this month, this day, and this day. We just get to this day. All right, damn, time passing by fast. That happened two paychecks ago. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> it's like, oh, I get three paychecks this month. Oh, free one! <laughs> I'm just not doing this, girl. You about five paychecks late? <laughs> That's funny. That's very true. Um, dope. Let's talk up. Let's uh, we had a we talk about tech on the show here and there. Um, the what was he? The owner or the founder of Samsung? Pass away. He was a chairman. He was the chairman. Uh, uh, Lee Lee Kong He he basically built the company up. So his dad died in 1987, 
Uh, Samsung was known, according to this article by the uh, New York Times, uh, was known for cheap TVs and unreliable microwaves, is what they said, not my words. But uh, after his dad passed, he took over the company. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And uh, he basically, uh, you know, took the company and made it what it is today. I mean, I I guess he was too old to, you know, he had a heart attack in 2014. So he was he just sat on the board. But uh, he basically uh, spearheaded Samsung into what it is today. So, you know, a lot of companies rely on Samsung, like uh, for their chips. You know, NVIDIA was buying their chips. Apple purchases their their uh, LCDs for their phones. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is interesting because it's like what you know, what does it like? This is a lot of the economy in South Korea. So it's just mm-hmm. interesting to note because it's like, what is the direction of the company after this? I mean, even though he was on a chair, he 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 strategically put the company where it is. So it's like, is it going to be business as usual or is the brand going to change? So uh, more will be revealed as uh, time goes on. But I just thought that was something interesting. Um, he was he was known. He was kind of crooked, like bribery and things like that, you know. But he got off or whatever. But um, he did. He was a mastermind behind Sam, the Samsung we know today. So it's interesting to see where the company is going to go after this. I think have y'all ever seen this movie it came on uh, HBO called The Pirates of Silicon Valley? I've heard of it. Yeah, I've definitely. Heard, I don't think I've seen it, but I heard of it. So anybody in tech didn't get there just being a uh, straight and narrow. Steve right. Jobs, Bill Gates, like all of them, stepped on a whole lot of people, bribed a whole lot of people, <laughs> and held pretty much you know, the proverbial gun to people's heads of other tech companies to get their way. IBM, like Steve Jobs, and like Steve Jobs, pretty much like manhandled IBM to get their technology to to push Apple forward. Like when Bill Gates came up with Windows, he pretty much bullied everybody else from from making the operating system. Right. Yeah. So, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's like all of them in tech. I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure Elon Musk got some, got plenty of dirt, you know. Oh, of course. Zuckerberg, yeah. all of them. Yeah, Z- well, we know what Zuckerberg did to get Facebook off the ground. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? He went on the straight and arrow. He, hell, he got sued. Right. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a lot of them in there that's just, just like that. Yep. I mean, yep. they're just like. They, they, had a, they had a hearing recently uh, with uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Google, and Jack Dorsey, I want to say, or somebody. Basically, you know, just checking them. Like, hey, what's going on? What y'all doing? They finna, they finna bring a lawsuit. Well, uh, anti um monopoly suit against Google. The government is well, the Trump administration is saying Google pretty much has a, a monopoly on search engines. Like, and what Google is saying is, if I like how I got a monopoly on search engine, if the first thing people want to do when they log onto their computer and search something is go to Google. I mean, the stuff's just been changed over the years because what we used to always go to, Yahoo. Oh. Google okay. came out and it just was like, well, let me check this Google out. The search results results were better. Right. Bing, just don't do it right. right. I'm just saying. R.I.P. Lycos. <laughs> like, XG, yeah. XG. That was my, XG. That was my dog, literally. Like when we was in junior high school, we used to go to Ask G's all the time. Then it went, then you know, like you or you go to MSN and search. But it's just like when Google came out, it was just like I can go to Google without all the extra hoopla. Yep. Let me get a shout out for Netscape. <laughs> no frills. Oh yeah, shout out to Netscape. <laughs> Netscape, I guess that that's the era that I love because I feel like Netscape was like the slowest stuff on earth. Netscape. Then get your Earthlink. 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 <laughs> Earthlink. <laughs> AOL. Matter of fact, uh, AOL search. Bro, it was a, it was like, I if kid you. you don't remember, <laughs> if you don't re- like, like, like this is like like dating rules. If you can't remember the sound of dial up. 
Like you're too young for me to date you. <laughs> That's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> land landline, what's that? Mm. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> like when somebody pick up the phone and knock you off the internet. <laughs> they, don't know, they, don't, they don't know what that's like. They just know if you don't pay the internet, oh, yeah, they just don't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mama telling you don't get on the damn internet. I'm gonna make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Them was the days, bro. <laughs> hey, you seen that that man? I'm trying to use this Napster. <laughs> man, and hey, it's gonna take me about it's gonna take me a week to download this song. <laughs> Thanks. Live man, wire. I'm a, man, I'm gonna tell you oh. something. Thanks to thanks to. Thanks to my home, me and me and Young's homeboy Kenneth Jackson, I had free internet all throughout high school. I don't know what he did to my apartment's internet, but I had free internet for like four years, bro. <laughs> I swear, man, Kenny was the truth. <laughs> Kenny mom, was the truth. My mom to like, hey, day, you don't get on internet? We got internet. What, <laughs> I don't know what Kenny did. Like real talk. I, matter of fact. I'm gonna call Kenny tomorrow and ask him. <laughs> Bro, mean when you hooked us all up with free internet for about you know all the high school? What did you do? <laughs> like, bro, I'm about like the old like when we had first got introduced to DSL and stuff, the old box, the old modems, you can go in and modify them to increase your bandwidth and everything. You know, yeah, they got all that on lock now. They put. Like necessity, I mean, you know, like when you need necessity, that's the mother of ingenuity. You know, that's how people like it. It be a, a ne- something necessary they need. So if they can't get it elsewhere, they find a way to create the way to solve that need. Exactly. We didn't want to pay for internet. That was a necessity. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. Uh, real quick, so we can jump into these topics, man. Um, let's shout out because we got uh, we had a good jump on followers since the last episode. Uh, let me see where was it because it's always like seven days from now. Okay, uh, librarian next door. We got uh, Ray Benton. We got Evil Cochin. Uh, we also got Fredent O Kurz. Curious? I don't know. Um, Gato Gaming, uh, Jailbird Six Six Two. We got that's about it from back home on that one. Um, I I I really hate that they say Jailbird though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tachu Augusto. We got not Satus Sutus. I don't know what this is. Um, and you that's suck. it. So right. Yeah. You bro. stuck at the night Japanese stuff, man. Bro, you really do. Hey, look. Excuse me, Mr. Japanese man. Japanese That's man. Why That's why I'm going to say That's funny. Go ahead, Mr. Japanese man. Go ahead, Mr. Japanese man. <laughs> um, and then we also Lord. got then we also got dope over here sub to the channel as well. So we got that. Uh so currently we are at 99 followers, oh, yeah. man. 99 followers. Uh, uh, uh. I'm expecting quality content out of you guys for my sub, okay? <laughs> Got I, logged it, sir. On, I, logged on the, I logged on the Twitch and uh, Quinn was getting that ass thwap in uh, Jump Force. He was like, I just got off the phone with my uncle. I'm about to whoop his ass. And he won. So shout out to that. <laughs> I mean, distractions throw off my, distractions throw off my, my my fighting skill, like, like for real, I'm just like the first game I've never changed the configuration on to suit my needs. Like when I play Street Fighter and stuff like that, I made my config, my button configuration, you know, adjustable for me. And this first game, I'm just trying to play play with the factory configuration, and I'm still getting used to it because there's no way I would make my block button R1. My block button, I, when I be when I want to block, I'm used to hitting like L2 or something. So, you know, it just, I'm just getting used to playing with the factory configuration. But I could be doing a calculus problem, cooking eggs, and 
cleaning my shoes and still kicking butt in Street Fighter. I'll go into that. Let's see. <laughs> okay. I want my because I want my I want my money's worth. I sub to the okay. channel. Damn it. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, Chad, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> hey, dude. All right. All right, man. Let's get uh, it together, man. All right, some quick news, real quick, and then we'll get to the main topics. We got uh, Mandalorian starts this Friday, season two on Disney ba -ba 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 -ba. Plus. We got uh, Watch Dogs Legion is dropping this Friday, also uh, one week before next gen. Um, we also got uh, along with Watch Dogs, uh, some other stuff that came out that Ubisoft announced was Ubisoft Connect. And so the details on Ubisoft Connect is that it's going to be, they're basically merging their PC platform and the, what is like the Uplay, which has like the reward and stuff, merging it all into one thing. And so now this is going to give them the ability to, basically what Uconnect is going to be, is going to be cross-play and cross-progression across all Ubisoft games. So you could take your, for example, I have a well-leveled division character on PlayStation. I can hop on... I'm guessing I can hop on Stadia or I can hop on PC or Xbox and play, take that character all across platforms with me or play with different people on different platforms if I want to play whatever platform I want to play on. So so I'm pretty sure Watch Dogs is going to be one of those first titles that's going to have that feature on it. Um, what else here? Oh, Apple TV is coming to Sony TVs, PS4 and PS5. Uh, PlayStation did announce uh, about the PS4 and PS5. Uh, that it will be available at launch and i also found out like about a day or so ago that it is coming to sony tvs also so for anybody that either was thinking about buying an apple tv or has one it's uh if you if you don't want it for airplay it's pretty useless right now but anyway uh let's can see. we really quickly briefly go over quibi shutting down y'all remember all those damn ads we were getting for quibi yes bro. at the top of the summer <laughs> that was so short-lived what happened quibi Hey, you know what? Like, what? like real talk. They had like some, like some of the sh the, the the shows that they were gonna be running. Like, even though they were like in short increments, looked interesting. Yeah, they right. They're supposed to be like grab oh. your attention, like short, like fifteen minutes or something, right? On the show. Yeah, like yeah. 10, 15 minutes. But like, they had something have... interesting about the serial killer guy, and I was like, I checked that yeah. out, but I didn't go. I didn't go. Uh, seek it out or nothing but damn that was like may right yeah yeah it was in the pandemic like may, the entire the summer. yeah and they just got first release dropped in may bro because they had so been sad. hyping it up showing the like because so many celebrities were talking about it like they had like little um they had like little classes and like 15 minute classes from different celebrities and stuff like they had invested a lot of money and put a lot of time to develop content, and COVID hit. <laughs> People yeah. weren't on the go no more. People was at home. So guess what they started doing? I guess I load up this Netflix. I guess I load up this Hulu. You know what right, I'm saying? Bro. And just watch whole seasons. Why I'm gonna watch ten minutes of a show that I can just I'm gonna sit here and watch? You know all. 127 episodes. I ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> True. Crazy, bro. Like, I'm like, damn. I ain't even get a chance to, to get my Quibi on. But bro, I, I, bro, I had downloaded the app about two weeks ago. I said, like, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check this out. And then I but saw that know, just like, I just deleted the app. I was like, all right. That's <laughs> and like, but you I know was... what? You know what came before Quibi that was like Quibi though? Go mm -hmm. 90. Oh, that's Remember right. Remember Go 90? Yeah, I had the Street Fighter show on there. Yeah, and I, I got Go 90 specifically for the Street Fighter show. Yeah, and did. it was it was interesting. They just never, you know, continued it. Yep. It got up to the fight. It, it, like, literally just watching that show, it was so accurate to the game. I was just like, this is how the movie's supposed to be. But it was on Go 90. The stuff that's supposed to go, and go right. I think go I think go ninety was just on Verizon or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem with Go Ninety, like you're specifically on Verizon. Yeah. Like no other, you know, services can get you. It's like our data says all the anime fans have Verizon. No, that's not the case. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> 
I was with Verizon in about three weeks and switched <laughs> over to eight. I mean, switched back to T Mobile. <laughs> it was like R and D R and D messed that one up for real. <laughs> yeah, they did that. <laughs> they flubbed that one. Um, I was with Verizon long enough to watch every episode of Street Fighter Show. That boy being watched this in three days, <laughs> probably one. <laughs> knowing you, <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> See. <laughs> All right, uh, season three of The Boys will introduce uh, Jensen Echols, which is playing Soulja Boy, not you, <laughs> Soulja Boy. <laughs> not <laughs> <is> still Ray. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, he is the uh, he is basically the original Homelander. Uh, whatever, what other information we got on this, John? Oh, as far as I know, I didn't really keep up with that far into it. I was just watching. That's more Briario. Oh, Briario. Right oh, okay. So Briario, please explain, Freddie. <laughs> Cougar, <laughs> Mr. Cougar. This wasn't. Well, but okay, um, so we I'll all help you out on that too, Briario. Say again, I'll help you out on it too. Okay, as far as we know, from what's explained from the uh, the comic books, you know, there's Soldier Boy was one of the first to be taking like the uh, the serum for Compound mm-hmm. V, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so he's basically maybe he has like the abilities the same as uh, Stormfront. Okay. But it, this is not the only thing. We're supposed to be getting like another spinoff as well with the boys, right? The spinoff. Yeah. So apparently, yeah, I heard that it was a uh, a spinoff. Uh, I think it's too early for them to start with the spinoffs, though. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of, pretty, yeah, pretty much. Like, I feel like they need to. Get further along in the show, at least get close to like the uh, the season before the last season they plan to do, and then right. introduce a spin spinoff. Right. Yeah, they they haven't really even gotten in depth with like the boys the yet. Current cat. Been... Yeah, they, they jump in the gun. Yeah. Um, so they'll listen to their fans and not and not actually do that. No, they need to really concentrate because yeah, this the first now- season it started out pretty slow for me. Like I had to really like just stay on it and keep watching, but then I actually got into it. But the second season, like right off the bat, it, it had my attention. Oh yeah, and I think that's the same route they need to go. But um, with Soldier Boy, I'm wondering if he's gonna be a good guy. Well, more say, be on the side with the boys instead of the side with the seven. Kind of makes you... He probably, the deal, he probably harbored bad feelings against, you know what I'm saying, um, Vault, just like, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially, like, just pushing them to the side and bringing Homelander in. I think that's where... That's where the like the the turn is gonna be. Did you see that? You see that Homelander is not even that old. He's like he's young. He just he's got young. on. Yeah. yeah. But these are we were talking about heroes that have lived through it, but you don't know like what their purpose was. You know that Compound V is a drug mm-hmm. created by the Nazis, right? Yeah. That's why I'm thinking like Soldier Boy is he a Nazi? No, Soldier Boy and, is more like Captain America. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying like, 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 what happened? Did somebody steal some compound V and they brought it to America, or you know, like what happened? Because basically, it's all the front. This, this is what you're saying. It's all the front. Right. Yeah. But uh, speaking of sure. Homelander, like, if anybody get a chance to tank put me on this. Go watch the uh, Superman versus Homelander fan made trailer. Like it's seamless, like seamlessly put together. Right. And it looked like it would be like interesting. But the way I'm looking at it, it's basically like Superman versus Nuclear Man 
from um super i think that was what superman 3 yeah like from yeah. superman 3 mm-hmm. and except that you know basically you know nuclear man if he got dark outside he was pretty much down for count but um oh you, you know talking about quest for peace that was four yeah oh okay well four yeah if he got you know dark outside he was pretty much down because like when they was fighting on the moon and you know the earth got in front of the and it got dark on the moon when the earth got in front of the sun superman was able to go ahead and you know hit him with some uh-ohs but like homeland ain't got that weakness so like i'm just trying to see like at homeland like let's be honest a little bit more cutthroat than superman so like are we gonna get are they gonna give us superman ready from the dead that's really just ready for that action or they gonna give us clark kent they might be you know, they might be the superman prime bro because superman prime don't give a fuck <laughs> it's the only but one like i know that I, I know it ain't real but like it yeah. would be a dope concept yeah yeah or 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 like, or or red sun no he don't care Oh yeah, yeah, he really don't care. Red, Red Sun don't Lois is dead. Red Sun don't care. <laughs> it's basically a mirror match. It's basically a mirror match at that point. <laughs> you got a lot of people saying they wanted to see uh, Homelander raise another bright burn. Uh, who's seen Bright Burn? I haven't seen it yet. I need to watch it. It's on Stars. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Yeah, I need to watch that too. I heard that kid needed a. Uh, Hell of a ass whooping, though. Oh, I bet he did. That's what... <laughs> Except you be getting the ass whooping. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> viciously. Right. Very, very viciously. So, like, the movie was really gory to me. Oh, I bet. Like, so, for, 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 for me, like, I've been, like, playing Jump Force and been seeing, like, these these scenarios of anime characters versus certain anime characters that you would never think would we'll go against each other. It just started making me think of other scenarios of, you know, besides anime characters of, you know, superheroes and, you know, villains and stuff that we have that are American based that probably would never go against each other, but because but, they're in different universes, but what if? So yeah. I think that's a that's a good chance for us to bring versus back. And just do it like a lot of like red like we like we'll just sit up and randomly the week before randomly pull two names out of a bucket or a hat and then you know put the pole up. Yeah. Yeah, I think now I think now is gonna be start being a good time as you know, we grow and stuff like that. It's definitely gonna be, especially in the community now, we could probably definitely right. do some do some uh do some ultimate battle polls now and get some some controversial, uh, get some controversial. Matchups. I said versus. I'm 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 crunk for this Ti versus GZ versus. So I said versus. So my bad. I meant ultimate battle. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be a really good battle. Yo, but Buster beefing with Ti though, that's, man. That, that's I was just about to say. That's like I thought about that. I was like I just heard a, the video about him talking about him saying Ti thinking he can. He can get him. I'm like, mm, I don't know, Tip. I don't know about nah, that one. what it was. Tip said it was pretty much like a generational gap between That's him and Buster. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was just like, Buster came out way before me. So, like, him going against somebody like LL Cool J or Method Man or somebody should be more suited. He was like me and Jeezy from the same era. He was yeah. just like, yeah, Buster, you was making music in that era. But, like... I wanted to go against somebody that was doing trap music. Buster was just like, and Buster said, yo, we both kids. And then Buster said, like, no, scratch that. I'm a god of this rap thing. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Bye. hey. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get on <laughs> That's something for uh, Rejects yeah. Radio. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, let's yeah. see here. Let's talk about uh, witches, Rario. Okay, me and Queen gonna have to gonna have to tackle this one. Okay. All right. So y'all know that the original one uh is, has been put on Netflix, right? I had watched it a week before, 
you know, just, you know, get familiarized with it. I have not read the book. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I haven't read the book neither. I ain't never read James and the Giant Peach neither, but you know, I, I like the movie. I think, have you read, have you read The Wishes? Mm-mm. No. Okay. I had a real nostalgic feel. It's a lot of it that's, that's changed from the one from the 90s. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me just talk about the performances. Octavia Spencer, awesome, of course. Played it, played a good grandma. Uh, I don't know the actor's name who played Luke. Mm-hmm. Performance, Anne Hathaway. I really think that the studio was scared to what was not there to make her scary enough. Mm-hmm. She oh, was she, more comedic. She was more comedic than scary. Yeah. That's just Anne, though. That's uh, I think she's meant to be scary. Like she's she just her roles that she's played just puts her in that realm of like a good guy. But we know she has range, though. Yeah, she has I, range, I, but I, it's like, like those actors and actresses that you just can't see anything but a good guy. Such as like Denzel, Denzel Washington. No, like, see, see, Denzel got real right. Denzel had been everything. He has range. He been everything for like when once he when became he pulled out Training Day. Yeah, that's, that's what it was that pulled him out of that range. Before and that, then Frank Lucas, Denzel. As, and, I, don't and, even, I don't even consider that a bad guy role. I don't I don't consider Frank Lucas a bad guy role. And that was one of my favorite movies. But then you gotta think about like John Travolta. Like right. like John Travolta was used to being the good guy all the way up until face off. Face off once I seen Yeah, once I seen John Travolta as a bad guy, I never wanted to see John Travolta be a good guy ever again because he played yeah. a bad guy so damn good. All right. What punisher movie? Uh, mm, oh, yeah, the Punisher. Yeah, he was. That was uh, the best. Yeah. That movies we don't talk about. <laughs> oh. Punisher Warzone was 10 times better. <laughs> I got to give it to the studio. Back to, uh, I'm talking about the witches. Mm-hmm. They did a good job. Uh, bring, I feel like it was really towards the book. Like a lot of, like from like the illustrations and how it was described in some of the uh, parts of the book. They really got that nailed, nailed down in this uh, adaption. Mm-hmm. I mean, my my first feeling of it, like watching it, I felt like it was trash. Then I had to put myself in the mindset of a child and right. try to look through it, look at it through the eyes of a child. I was and once I, as I started it though, like okay, this, like pretend like you're not, you haven't seen the one from the nineties. Right. Like I have to remember when I'm watching certain stuff, like this really is not made for my mentality. This is made for the mentality of a child. So I like I have to put myself in that mind space in order to, you know, actually give a good critique of the movie. Once I put myself in that mind space, I started to enjoy the movie and not criticize it so much. Mm-hmm. But it's one movie I'm gonna criticize the hell out of because it was meant for adults, and that's coming up soon too for us to talk about. Okay. Um, <laughs> another thing about the film is that uh, was it produced by Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro? I can see some of his work in the film. I know he had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I like my thing is if I ain't looking for like on time I was watching credits really it's Marvel movies and <laughs> DC movies looking for that you know bonus scene so like other movies I already watch credits to even see I'm just being honest I could feel some of his work in there though even though Look- and then not because Octavia Spencer was in it, you know, one of his recent films that I've seen, you know, was, you know, The Shape of Water. 
Mm-hmm. He was a oh, yeah. yeah. The fact that uh, Dope standing up here instead of shaking his hair, like, <laughs> like, is really oh bothering God. him. It's like <laughs> throwing me off. <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys talking about, man? Because he see he's steady doing this like he throwing his hair back. <laughs> like his hair getting in his eyes or something. And he's steady doing this like he's throwing his hair back or something. But like I'm telling you, I'll give the film a chance. It was good to me. I gave it, I went ahead and gave it an eight, eight out of ten. Okay. Nah. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Even when I changed my mindset, I still had to give it that hot. Like what, what did you I do? had to let I had to put my nieces in front of it, like my nieces and nephews in front of it and let them watch it and then ask them and let them tell me what they think about it. Because I'm looking at this, no matter what I try to do to change my mindset, I still have to remember I'm 35 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, (laughs) but, uh, no this, I mean, like I said, if for children, I, I think it'll it'll work out perfectly. But I mean, I just could just see certain stuff that just didn't, you know, appeal to me. It ain't nothing I'm finna go back and watch again. Yes, Del Toro was a producer. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Robert Zemeckis was the director. All right, let's go to the next topic. Let's go on to talk about bad hair. <laughs> uh, now, I see that oh, here we go. Here we go. No, we're not talking about my damn hair. Bad hair, yes. Yeah. All right, let me say something right quick. Bad hair has the premise of having a great story. It was just a trash ass movie. Was it trash because of the writing or was it trash because of the casting? Casting wasn't bad. Okay. It was yeah. trash because it's like a Sharknado type movie. Mm. And if you ever watch Sharknado or anything sci fi channel related, that's what, mm. like, you know, all those movies trash as hell. Mm. Then it was shot in that eight millimeter film filter, uh-huh. which made it even more trash. And what? hey, wasn't Usher in that movie or something? I saw his face or yeah. something. Usher, they got Usher What's on the, the like screen. They got Usher on the on the on the screen on on uh, uh, for the movie. Like he played a big role. Him and Kelly Rowland is in the movie a total of about three minutes. <laughs> if did, that much. They did that to sell. They did that to sell the movie, bro. Like, oh, Usher's to in this movie. The movie. Oh, yeah, wow. this is the this is the faculty twenty twenty. No, it's not. Bad hair. Like, bad hair was a bad film, but it will become a cult classic. What's up, Natara? Like, like, like when I say it has a good story chat. because it basically takes place in 1989, but you know, it during that time, women who wore their hair natural were really screwed, were really scrutinized. So, um, you know, they they couldn't get certain jobs and stuff like that because they wore their hair natural. So, you know. They convinced this girl to go get a sew-in, but the sew-in, and it's based around an old African folklore tale, I mean, an old African slave, a slave uh, folk tale called the Moss Hair Girl. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it got a great story behind it, and then it has a lot of great cultural references that what Black women are dealing with today concerning their hair, you know, that they've been dealing with for a long time concerning their hair. It's that just the story was trash. Even with Jay Farrell in it, like Jay Farrell wasn't even real comedic relief from the movie. Jay oh. Farrell would probably be this old Playboy dude that was sleeping with the the, the star. Huh? The protect the protagonist. He was sleeping with the Yeah, the protagonist of the movie and sleeping with Vanessa Williams, whose name is Zora. Like, and, you know, she would point out, yo, she old enough to be your mama, which is true. But this, the, 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 the thing about it is when they start the movie, they show the, the cover girl billboard of Vanessa Williams from the 80s. And then they bring her in wow. as 
you know, it being, you know what I'm saying, the villain. So, which really the villain is the weed. So, you know what I'm saying? No, but the it, weed. No, it's not. Well, I'm getting ahead, getting ahead, jumping ahead. Spoiler, spoiler alert, people. But, you know, I let Briario fit. I think the, <laughs> the movie was trash. Excuse me. That's true. Thank you. The, behind the scenes. We all figured out in the end who the real who the real villain was, who was controlling everything. And all yeah, that. behind the scenes, yeah, we yeah. figured out who the villain was. <laughs> right. Real villain. I haven't seen it, but I wasn't gonna watch it. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen it either, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I can't play the press and play button. Watch, um, Happy Death Day. Tim that was good for me. That was that was one of that is one of my favorite like new horror movies, and it's actually really good. And the second one is even, is even good. Like Happy Death Day, it really impressed me. I didn't think I didn't think people had it in, in them to be creative anymore. But okay. I got another film I I need y'all to uh, check out. It came out last year, I believe. Y'all know that Hulu has their own uh, horror section, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Hulu- Halloween. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It was uh, one of the Christmas specials, and it has become one of my favorite horror films on Hulu. It's about a uh, a toy stuffed stuffed creature called Puka. Not trick or treat. No, not trick or treat. What you talking about? Right. <laughs> what you talking about, Freddy? <laughs> Y'all gonna check it out. It's a, it was the Christmas Christmas special for, for uh, the horror horror uh, Hulu horror horror nights. They be killing me with Maybe. these uh, with these Christmas horror movies. I'm like, what type of sick people are you to turn Christmas into? Because Halloween and Christmas run like con- concurrent, but they're just like I was getting to that. Like a movie, I was excited to see, but when I finally saw it, like wait for that killer turkey. I, was there, huh? <laughs> I see. I'm just waiting for that killer turkey movie, bro. It's, 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 oh it's no, I was like, <laughs> like I was, I was excited to see Krampus, and then when I watched Krampus, because I knew the story of Krampus, so when I watched Krampus, I was so disappointed. I was just like, really, <laughs> really, <laughs> this is what y'all did to me. <laughs> I felt like Cartman. You bastards. You killed Krampus. <laughs> Bastard. Uh, oh, man. What the? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wardrobe change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a Hulu original by uh, Dark, and it's a dark Christmas tale about it, this stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why you got on this two little ass <laughs> This has been forever too. <coughs> no, it's like it's it's all right, like, now you, you see why he was missing. <laughs> it's like you cut out the circulation to your head, dude. <laughs> no, that's Batman and Robin. <sighs> yeah, that's Batman and Robin. <laughs> Like you look like he cut that off the back of a cereal box. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> that was the worst suit. That was the worst the suit ever in the franchise. Nipple suit. Hey, re- relax though, my muscle. Let's continue the show. Oh man! All right, let's talk about this Power Ranger. <laughs> oh my god! I can whoop the Power. I can whoop the Power Rangers. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> but real, go to I mean, y'all. It's one of my favorites, and that was actually better to me. It was better than uh, Bad Hair. What was that? The movie I was I was mentioning. Mo- the movie just mentioned. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the name of that one? Puka. Puka. Yeah. Puka. Puka. Okay. Tink just said that like she was trying to explain it, trying to explain somebody that didn't know English how to say it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Like we okay. like to uh, Michael B. Jordan when he messed up our person name. <laughs> like, bruh, I know you kill monger and all. 
Like, I don't even reveal how bad he said it. I ain't trying to find out. But, like, he did butcher Naruto's on name. Like, like, like. Straight up. You killed my and all, but you ain't gonna do my boy like that. Put some respect uh, on his name. That's all uh, I'm saying. Oh, oh, my God. oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, okay, new Power Rangers reboot. Um, I don't understand why they're rebooting. I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, the last the Power last, Ranger, last yeah. Power Ranger, last Power Ranger movie, it had some things about it that could be changed, could be fixed, of course. But the Zords, like as far as that movie goes, the most trash thing about that movie were the Zords. <laughs> and Goldar. Let's just go and, ahead and, and throw that out there. And, and legit Goldar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Goldar, like Actual as far Goldar. as everything else, the story and everything like that behind it was dope. You know what I'm saying? I can get with that. It was more modern. And mm-hmm. let's just be honest: the things that the teenagers were dealing with were legit teenage things, and every vernacular. Like, let's be honest: ain't too many goody two shoes teenagers out there like the Power Rangers that we grew up on, or the right. Power Rangers that they still show on TV. These good two. Get a two right. shoes, teenager. These right. were actual screw ups, mm-hmm. which most teenagers are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I can get down with that. But yeah. I'm pretty sure if this new Power Rangers that's going to come out, that's going to be a movie and a TV show, they're going to take us back down the road of taking us out of reality and putting up these fake ass teenagers. <laughs> yeah. What's Close up, Kai, in the chat? Um. Yeah, man. So the so the TV show is supposed to tie into the movie. Um, <laughs> it's like there's there's so much that I mean, like I said, they I mean the kept... first movie tied tied into the TV show. So yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie and Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, both of them tied into the TV show. Right. So I can understand them wanting to go back that route. Yeah, but, but like, but like, also too, like a lot of people don't know this. For example, like, okay, so here's something they could have instantly really like told a story about. So, like, you remember in the in the first gen Power Rangers when they sent Billy and Trini off to do Peace Corps stuff, it really wasn't. Oh it yeah, really yeah. Was, it really wasn't Peace that wasn't Corps. Billy and they, they went to the do that was, uh, that was that was Jason Zach and uh, Trini that went out to do the Peace yeah, Corps stuff. Yeah, did the Peace Corps stuff. So, but to kind of find out, it was actually if you read the comics, they in the comics they actually branch off and tell the story of what happened. It was basically a secret mission. It was more. It was it was them actually going into space to be Rangers is what it was. Space. It wasn't. Yeah, and they so became it was, it was, the Omega Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I like that story. Because once I read the Omega Rangers story, I didn't feel bad no more about my boy leaving the team. I was like, my boy left the team and became an even better, an even better badass than he previously was. Yeah, and then so oh yeah, uh, yeah. let me see, go. let me like go. y'all to bring up Lord Draken or whatever the fuck he want to call himself. Excuse <laughs> my language. You know what I'm saying? But like, let's just be honest. My boy gone. My boy gone. Forever be. My boy come back and hand Tommy his ass. Like (laughs) go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Go. Like I'm forever. Like I'ma always ride with Ali. I'm forever ride with Jason. They Tommy had to go get my boy because they couldn't whoop somebody's ass. (laughs) Like they had to go get my boy to become the Gold Ranger. I'm gonna ride forever with Goku. Even though my boy just messed up in the last issue of the manga. Oh, but you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like a yeah, he, put that, he, he, he put that boy in a he put he put that boy in a pickle though. <laughs> I'm, I read it, I read some uh, excerpts from that. He put that boy Goku in some, in a precarious position though. So Of course yeah. a Akira Toriyama, I'm gonna need you to do one thing. Just for once, without my boy having to fuse with Vegeta, let him get a Vegeta attitude and go ahead and take the villain out. That's the one thing I respect about. That's like one of the things I respect about Vegeta. When it comes down to it, he really gives no else, and he be ready to just go ahead and get this over with because I got more important things to do with my time. 
Like, mm-hmm. Stop trying to turn people good, Goku. Some people can't be turned good. You know, some people you got to throw gas on and set their ass on fire. <laughs> and it just went dark. <laughs> like, seriously, man. Like, I had, like, that's why sometimes I wish I like the way they had future Gohan, the route Gohan was going. Gohan won with that. That BS Gohan was trying to come through and just take folks out, one arm and all. Yeah, that's very true. Batman had to learn that the hard way. Some people just gotta die. <laughs> it's like Joker yeah. should off that boy the first time y'all met. You wouldn't have half of the problems you would have had. <laughs> Man, <Yep. laughs> it's like no, like, like real talk. I'm when a real Batman, Batman wow. waited till he was old and Joker was old to finally kill Joker. <laughs> Yeah. So y'all have been fighting really for bad. 30 years. It took you 30 years to kill Joker. <laughs> He's a hard he had sentimental kill. moments with Joker. Oh, Jesus. All right, man. Oh, so it was sentimental when he took Jason Todd and beat him to a half, beat him half dead. So you Me gonna shoot Bro, speaking of that, uh, and, and um, Kai in the chat, we was talking about this. The three Jokers comic, <laughs> Robin get his revenge. I'm gonna say that much. Uh, I'm gonna move on. Uh, Tom Holland um, revealed a photo of him playing the part of Nathan Drake from the Uncharted movie. Um, it was like that was some mixed opinions. People didn't understand. People didn't kind of know like the premise of the movie as far as like what it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so many. The internet just yeah. They were just like, oh, he's too young. He's this, like, bro. First of all, it's not Tom his fault. Tom Holland down there 30. He ain't his fault he looked that young. That ain't his fault. He's just young looking. And, that, that's, and, when you be, and when you become 40 years old, that's a good thing. Trust me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I mean, let's just be honest. I can speak for me. Like, as far as males, I can speak for me and royalty. If we didn't have receding hairlines and this facial hair and we shaved, like, we pretty much would look like we were still in high school. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Which is... I don't hope nobody, I hope you don't feel bad if I'm not receding hairline. Everybody can see that shit on camera. <laughs> oh, hey, look, bro. <laughs> look, bro, I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> Cornrows, brother. Cornrows. I had it for a long time. Cornrows. Hey, like I had braids for a long time, but like male pattern baldness runs in my family, though. So I'm fighting it as long as I can. Hell, if I get the money, I'm going to get the shit Tiger got. <laughs> Tiger and Bron. I don't want what LeBron got because his shit still didn't come out right. I want shit Tiger got. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh jeez. Okay. Oh. Mario. Mario looks like he's still 16. That's what I'm saying. Mario look like he laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, how old are you? Oh, you you have Demi. Demi is so bad. It's like, oh, he finally turned 13 on my on my birthday. <laughs> I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> he finally hit puberty, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, like for yeah. real, you remind, like, you literally remind me of my best friend, though. Like, my best friend didn't start growing facial hair until he was, like, 33 years old. Oh, God. <laughs> we had a couple of those like, dudes in our, in our class, bro, that just, that just started growing facial hair as soon as they hit 30. They were baby faced for their entire 20s, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, he couldn't, he could not grow... Like my boy, like my I had boy facial hair at thirteen, bro. Man, I'm talking about I had facial hair in high school. I mean, I had facial hair in elementary school. Me, my homeboy Rob Jennings, and a couple other guys, like we had full mustaches in elementary school. Shoot, man, the vitamin E is a mother. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> <laughs> testosterone, it's high. Um, let's see here. Um. <laughs> But yeah, man, but on the uh, Tom Holland thing, it's like, okay, so just to clear it up real quick, a lot of people saying a bunch of stuff about it. 
he is supposedly playing a young Nathan Drake. He is not the older Nathan Drake. He is playing Nathan Drake, the young version of him. So it's not the same version that you that you saw played in the video game. So, you know, calm down. And then also Mark Wahlberg revealed this weekend his look for Sully. And then we got a bunch of Borat jokes on the top of that, but we're not going to go into that. That's just a, a fucking... <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a rabbit hole that you don't even want to go down. It's, it's, you don't want to go... Yeah. And the Man. fact Borat is finna start streaming, pretty much Borat too finna start streaming. It uh, was just, it was just screaming for that attention. Oh, I know. Um, well, the cheer said, "Why would they? Why would they make a Nathan Drake that no one knows?" Yeah. Um, I mean, if you played the games in, I think Uncharted two, or no, three and four, I believe. You go back to him when he when he was a young little boy when he was getting into actually you know exploring and stuff like that. So they kind of like sort of touched on it in the games in the flashback scenes. I think four actually starts out with him as, as young with before he um does the whole thing in Uncharted four. You know because his brother's there and all that stuff. But um but no, I mean that's I mean that's fine. I mean because if you think about it, if these adventures are true to his you know everything that he's been going through, you don't want to see something you played in a video game because you know how it ends. So I mean, right. Right. let's go back and do the stuff that made him so, who he is and who be why he became who he is. So Nathan Drake really is just Indiana Jones when you when you when you boil it down to his core. Yeah. And yeah. if you ever watch all the Indiana Jones movies, I'm not sure if it's uh, uh Raiders of the Lost Ark or uh uh, uh Temple of Doom. I'm pre- I think yeah, it's Raiders, Raiders of the Raiders I think it's I think it's Raiders of the Lost Ark where it starts off showing young Indiana Jones yeah. and it shows how he got his hat and how he got the whip and all of that. Like why he uh, well, got that lifestyle. Right. What about the series. You forgot about that. They oh, did a whole- yeah, the young series. Yo, yo, yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, young Indiana Jones. But like it's it, a uh. Show. But it, um, you know, sometimes you need that backstory for an already established character. Yeah. Like I'm watching Hellstrom, and when I I was used to reading the comic books, was just used to Hellstrom as Hellstrom, mm-hmm. you know. But watching the series, I'm getting a lot of backstory. So mm-hmm. sometimes having that backstory make you understand the character a lot better. The yeah. tear like, on, on Resident Evil, she was saying, she said, like, the Resident Evil, on Resident Evil, uh, this is my honest opinion about Resident Evil movies. I the feel like the they, movies don't have nothing to do with the game. Trash. I, I feel like the I feel like the movie should have just really stuck to the actual story of the games because the games had a lot of, had a lot of story that they didn't ever explain in the games of, like, right. so I felt like it could have been, fans they had about a, to be mad. They have, they, have, they, they had they had a lot to they had a lot to work off of with Resident Evil, but they decided to go left when they should have uh, just stayed. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. They're just like Silent Hill. That's just like Silent Hill movie. Silent Hill was actually a great game, but yeah. the movie versus the pyramid head dudes snatching the skin off the lady. That was like the best part of the movie. That's a trash ass movie. Like, I hate when people try to go left of the game. So far, left of the game, it doesn't make sense. That's why a lot of video game to movie adaptations have gone south. Because yeah. you you totally alienate the story and try to do your own thing. <clears throat> yeah. The remake. Yeah. yeah, true that, true that. Um, Google Stadia. So Google Stadia's creative director uh, goes on a tirade rant on Twitter talking about how streamers are they should be made to pay for the content that they stream and yeah. Twitter and streamer Twitter body slam this dude all over the place. Like, like uh, well, like that's like speaking for somebody like Ali A. If I'm if I'm playing Call of Duty so much and I'm getting the people to buy Call of Duty because I'm playing it, like why not give it to me free because I'm giving y'all free promotion. Thank you. That is the exact point that I think that everybody has agreed upon. It is literally the reason why it happens is because one is free marketing. That's that's the first thing. Um, the other part of that conversation is to Jason Schreier, who is uh, I think he used to be the editor for Kotaku. 
uh, also stated that this guy, his title he has in his Twitter handle does not justify who he really is because he's really not a creative director for the Google Stadia. He's a creative director for a studio that's on under Google Stadia. And he straight up just threw this dude under the bus saying that, uh, yeah, Google just purchased the studio that he works for probably about like this past December. So he he said they were like, why are you giving this dude all this gas, you know, on this particular situation when he's kind of like a nobody, kind of like a nobody. Like you know the what to play, to play devil's advocate though, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know where this falls in. Like you can't stream movies on Twitch, right? You can't stream uh, music on Twitch now. Well, we didn't even talk about the DMCA uh, tirade, uh, tirade, uh, tirade, or. Uh, wave yeah. they went on on twitch but uh i i think that's where he's trying to get in that vein is what he's saying i mean it's but because the platform was because you, like if you like if you stream on playstation right remember quinn you was going through that the other day like they block out certain scenes yeah i gotta get an elgato if y'all want to give well, me I mean, something i mean that aside i'm just saying like I think that's where he was. Going. It's bullshit, but excuse my language. But I think that's where he was going with that. But, but at now, the same time, at the same time, you have to understand, like a lot of these games and these studios probably wouldn't get money or the sales that they get if it wasn't for people streaming these games. Because going back to the beginning of, like I followed, like when I started playing Call of Duty and I was looking for tips and stuff, the first person that always popped up on YouTube was Ali A. And so with Ali A, I would listen to Ali A and that's how I started getting good in older versions of Call of Duty, just listening to him and watching him. So it made it and it made me want to like when he got the game early and then played the game, it made me want to go and get the game because right. I already knew what to expect. Right. So therefore what Treyarch and um the other companies did was like, why not send this dude a copy of this game ahead of time and it's gonna boost our sales? Yeah. And it's just great marketing because you basically don't really have to advertise and put put that much money into advertising because you really just got somebody out here giving you free advertising and the only thing you gotta do is provide him with a free, you know, with a free game ahead of yeah. time because he loved this game. And then he gonna it's a double edged sword for real. But he get other but the way he make his money and other streamers make their money, like Ninja and all the rest of them, is that they end up getting endorsement deals from other companies and the only thing they gotta do is sit up and play the game and run a commercial doing their YouTube stream. So here's so here's, play a, here's games a, here's on stream where where people are like, Oh, what's this game? And they never seen it before and they're like, I'm getting this game because they see me play it. Like the game indivisible. Mm -hmm. uh it's like an rpg side scroller action adventure rpg uh turn base as well and people are like man i'm gonna get this game i need this so so here's so here's so here's the other part of this whole conversation with um them saying the streamers should pay for games all right twitch has we do pay for games twitch that's what i'm about to say twitch has Too much money <laughs> twitch has millions of people who are trying to become streamers or streaming as a hobby streaming to you know to be a financial, you know, for financial reason, whatever the case may be. But the people who are at the top of the Twitch directory are literally the 1% who don't have to pay for games. I, I'm, I, I, stream, I stream, I pay for games, dope streams. He paid for his games, young streams. He pays for his games. So I'm like a good majority of the people that are feeling and stuff like that. I doubt that half of us are getting keys from these companies. It's the 1% that's getting it. It's, it's the ninjas. It's the, um, I'm gonna get to the point where I'm getting my games and assistance for free. That's all I want. Like I <laughs> just give me my PlayStation five for free and I'm good. <laughs> If I ain't got to pay for a PlayStation 5 in the games I like, I'm good. Yeah, it's the, he's, talking about the one get, he's talking about the 1%, man, for real. Like Definitely. those that get paid to play the game, I ain't got that much time to dedicate to a game to get paid to play it. But if I can, get a, if I can play it enough where I get a free system when the new gen drop ahead of time, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like oh. I'm just, I still want to be on Travis Scott level where the point like I like halfway Travis Scott level where like 
because I'm playing this game so much, like they send me a free system. And oh, I legitly hate Xbox. PlayStation, if you're listening, I love PlayStation so much, I won't even go get another system. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Key, he does. Dope does have on a Batman mask. Oh, he did. Oh, now he's the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, God. God damn. What? <laughs> What's going on? What? what are you guys talking about? <laughs> he's not Batman anymore. Hey, anymore. how you go? You went from Elvis to Batman. To the Phantom. To, to, the, to the Phantom of the Opera. I mean, hey, sometimes you just feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. I don't know what to say. <laughs> really? Really? That's what we going with? Hey. I'll be back, y'all. I'll be uh, back. Oh, my All God. Right. We changing clothes right now. Uh, xCloud. So, xCloud, uh, Microsoft is rumored to be getting ready to come out with a peripheral uh, for xCloud, which is going to be in a stick form, which is going to be something that's going to rival a Stadia Chromecast uh, for xCloud. Um, that didn't work when... Uh, who did that? Who did that? Oh, the stick uh, thing? Uh, 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 what's the thing? New, new, uh, it came out a while ago. Newbie or new something. It was a it was a cloud-based game, and I can't think of the name of it. It right wasn't. On, it wasn't was on live. It wasn't on live, was it? No, it was no. something else. But I don't know if that'll work though. It it died out very quickly. They're yeah. really trying to sell hardware. Yeah, they really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're trying to be able to get it on the TV where they're not trying to, you know, I guess they're not trying to force people into buying more and more. You know, not trying to force people to buy more and more consoles. Um, I mean, because you can really, I mean, you really make the money off the software, to be honest. I mean, in some cases, but. <laughs> that Jedi robe in, and, and that Jedi costume hot as hell. If y'all don't understand how hot that robe and shirt is, who look. Oh, I bet. Um, <laughs> Why I got on half a mask? I want to wear costume. Anyway. All right, 007. 007. The new 007, No Time to Die, uh, may be skipping theaters. They're trying to shop the movie to Netflix and streaming services. So Sony, who holds that movie, are looking to uh, get on streaming. Oh, yeah. Coming to America 2 is coming straight to Amazon. That is correct. Yeah, about that. December 18th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I got Amazon Prime. I better not have to pay for Amazon I do mm. too, bro. I'm I got trying that. to get that. I got that what you call it. So uh, either way, no matter where it lands. Uh, you see, I got that. I, I, mean, I got that thing on me. I mean, I got that. I got that. I got that. I got that, that one in the chamber too, Jesse. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. Hey, hey, look, my, I, my, I ain't got no problem uh, sticking it. <laughs> so you better ask about me. Oh, we gotta watch what? Oh, hold on. I have all the episodes. Right quick. <laughs> right now um <laughs> more uh we got some more news on the justice league snyder cut which is, which is actually called the, the justice league director's cut now uh got more reshoots jared leto is going is uh is going to be in the justice league movie and also uh joe what's his last name magda what the hell is that name is um the magic mind guy yeah what you call it uh chick from uh what's the name of that, that show family. Modern Family. Think how many times? Yeah. Think how many times you watch Magic Mike? I really Keep hate. It. I hate Not Leto's joke. Deathstroke is coming. I got yeah. all the jokers. Not one. Out of all the jokers, I hate Leto's Joker the most. Like I hate oh, you that. Trash. You never watched Magic Magic Mike? It was a good movie. I've never watched it, and it got me bored. I ain't had no reason to watch Magic Mike. I, I haven't seen it. I have Magic no Mike is a. <laughs> I have no reasons. I have no reasons to see it. It's a great I American have, cinema. Um, but yeah, so we I got reshoots. He said, um. <laughs> but yeah, so we got reshoots coming in for those two characters. So we're going to see what what role is the Joker. Is the Joker or, I mean, really probably going to be the uh, the Legion of Doom, which is basically what they are with Lex Luthor. Because at the end of Justice League and the after credits, they show them on a, I think it was like a boat or a yacht or something like that, all three of them. Well, not, not the Joker, but it was Deathstroke and Lex Luthor. So this could potentially be the Legion of Doom, 
playing some form of part and maybe and also maybe hopefully because this justice league uh director's cup is supposed to be a four or six part uh series it's going to be on hbo max it's not going to be a just one sit down watch through movie because snyder said it is you know his movie his cut is like four to six hours is what how the length of his movie so it's going to be it's going to be parts another reason i don't like let old joker like i hate his laugh that old force, ha ha ha, laugh. Like I hate his laugh. I actually liked. I actually like Leto's Joker. I don't know. It just made him more modern, I guess. Yeah, he's a more modern Joker. He's just, he's just, I think people hate them hate him because it is not a Joker that they've seen. He's not the comedian. He's not the what is it? Exactly. The comedian, the psychopath, and the I forgot what the other one is. But he's not either of those three. He's a completely different version or an organic version of, of a version of him we've never seen. And he's more modern right. because he's more of a modern day pimp gangster version of the Joker. That's literally what the he Joker. is. Like what little Joker remind me of is the Joker crew from Batman Beyond. That you know pimp. when Batman <laughs> when Bruce Wayne saw those Joker, he was like. You're not even a real Joker. I knew the real Joker. Like a pimp, a pimp like, named Joker. Me, <laughs> like he's not like that. Joker is the Joker that Terry McGinnis punches in the mouth and throws to the side like he ain't nothing. Yeah. But yeah, like, we you were... know, I don't even consider him a super villain. Not that Joker. Yeah. Well, like, but like, Jared, he came on just... both both ends. DC Legend and Joker, Nicholas Joker, yeah. and uh, Romero's Joker are super villains to me. Leto's Joker is somebody who just decided, I'm going to wake up one day, paint my face, and go on by my business. <laughs> All right. Um, real quick. So, we'll talk about some, just in the theme of Halloween and all that good stuff, man. Um favorite halloween franchises uh we won't have time we won't have time to rank them because i wanted to actually do the rank list um we may try to do something where we can do a rank list it on the first, it ain't gonna count. no i'm not trying to do it on the first I'm, we're gonna see something we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at the schedule and see if we can do a special because it's like the one i pulled up for like we did the uh the black sitcoms i pulled up the one for like franchises dude it's a lot of freaking movies that's one entire mm-hmm. episode of nerfo podcast just to rank them all it's that many and I'll, I'll send you a link too just so you can see but uh let's do a round table favorite franchises uh let's start with you young i kind of know what you're gonna say but go ahead <laughs> Briario is the embodiment of my favorite horror franchise. Same. There you go. Same. I think is when it comes to horror, I hate the silent stalker like Mike Myers and Jason. True enough, I like the movies. I just like a horror villain with some personality. And Freddy got so many one-liners. Let's suck the face, bitch. Welcome to the prime time, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just like the one-liners and the sarcasm when he's getting ready to kill somebody. Is is like that personality. Even with like like my favorite two before they just got real trash were Freddy and Child's Play because of the personality that the the villains had. Mm-hmm. That personality of being sarcastic, smart aleck, and having one-liners just appeal to me. Maybe they're just staying on my asshole. I don't know. But, you know, I just, I love that her type of personality. Like, stuff like Pumpkinhead and, like, even I mean, even in um, damn, I just, I knew the name of the movie. It just escaped my mind. But Pinhead, Pinhead didn't even have a personality. Zero. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I just love villains with a personality. That boy showed up with they my boxing. They style it and just walk <laughs> up on you. Don't get me wrong. Mike Myers and Jason did some fly ass shit when they killed somebody. <laughs> like, Mike Myers did the smoothest kill I ever seen in Halloween H2O. My boy wow. lowered himself down from a pipe with one hand, stabbed the dude real quick, and raised himself back up. <laughs> that was smooth. I saw Jason uppercut a dude and knock his head off. And, uh, Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? 
I ain't talking to you, Alexa. <laughs> but <laughs> that wasn't Alexa. That's that that ghost that's gonna come get you. Man. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Look. Like they got some smooth yeah. feel. I saw Jason pick a chick up in a sleeping bag and slam her across the tree. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they played the home run music behind it. <laughs> that was like da, 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 and you heard her bones breaking her body with the last snap of the tree. Bro, that's like, an actual I that's an actual get... finisher in the five to the thirteen game too. Actually, they actually have that yeah. in the game. <laughs> I don't know how to play with them. I love that. But uh, you know, like it just like what sells me more is the personality, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right, team. Well, um, Freddie, of course, and I like the the scream, um, franchise. Yeah, you took mine. Oh, sorry, but yeah, the scream, and of course, it was both creators are the same. Wes Craven, he's one of Craven. the 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 hard gods of the '80s and early um, 2000s. Like he really put horror on the map. Indeed. And he continued. Like, Wes Craven was pretty much through the 80s. Took a, like, when he did the new Nightmare and yeah. 90, was like 92. He took a break and then just came back with Scream because, with you Scream. know, it was, pretty, it was pretty much over with for Freddy behind that yeah. in his mind. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. Wes Craven is like god tearing horror. Him and Stephen King. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Braulio, Freddy. <laughs> uh, do, do I even do I even have to ask you? Honestly, I mean, I probably don't have to right. ask you. <laughs> well, y'all know, y'all know, I I too love the uh, Night, Nightmare on Elm Street, but I'm really I'm really feeling uh the work of James Wong. Oh yeah, new kid James on the block. Mm-hmm. Um, Insidious. Insidious. Oh. The Insidious franchise is my yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, I don't know if he yeah he is the Conjuring series too, right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he did. Let me tell y'all something. The Curse of La Delona was one of my favorites. He did that too. I think so, but it's part it's part of the uh, the Conjuring series. Yeah, like and I those. Haven't seen that one. Like, like, we just talking about franchises, but mm-hmm. like horror movies, like Poltergeist, and you know yeah. what I'm saying, like, you know, uh, The Exorcist and all that. That's like in my top ten because as a ch- like anything that like spooked the shit out of me as a child, that's in my top ten. Like, yeah. I yeah, saw like, Pumpkinhead. You scared to go I to saw sleep at night. Head. Yeah, I saw Pumpkinhead and was just like, really? This guy? <laughs> yeah. for, for me, so so Tink did take one of my top ones, but it wasn't my top one, right? I think my top one is going to be the Saw franchise. Oh, you when I mine. saw that, that was like, <laughs> unlike any other thing. I was like, wow, this dude is crazy. And it was so gory. Saw, it's toy, I mean, it's horror. I it is though. Saw is suspense. <laughs> And but it's horror because, though. It is horror. Let's not it's get just it gory suspense to me. It goes in the which is like Silence of the Lambs supposed to be a horror movie, but the, when it won the Oscar, it won the Oscar in suspense because they didn't want to give a horror <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. so so saw Hostel. number one for Hostel. me. <laughs> the reason why I won't say Freddy is because the movies didn't the the original movies didn't age well. Um. The second one for me is is uh, uh, Scream, and then I gotta give Paranormal Activity. Like you gotta give it up to that that franchise too. I, it's, you know, yeah, it, yeah. Paranormal, paranormal Activity, and then, and then, and then a runner up like a like a like like a Six Man of the Year is gonna be scary movie franchise. Even though it ain't scary, that still shaped kind of like you know these kind of. Like, I know we weren't supposed to list them, but. The Blair Witch franchise and Paranormal Activity. Yeah, Blair RD, Witch was like supposed to be, you know, set in reality ass movies, yeah. which yeah. you know, yeah, first person view ass movies. 
and they were just trash to me. Like, I now, said that why like, really? Now, okay, now. And I Blair, tried to no. the first nightmare on Elm Street, and it was trash. I was like, no. oh. Now Blair, now, now Blair, now Blair Witch, for example, Blair Witch did something that with the the grounded in reality, bro. Let's be let's be honest. When that movie came out, we were we were we were young. They portrayed that movie like it actually happened, and half and half of us believed that it really happened because we're nobody doing no interviews, we're nobody doing anything. They're like, bro, we got this footage. Oh, it had happened. Yeah, oh, look at me. Like, the misinformation. <laughs> and the thing was like, like I I, I had like a a like. It, like my thing was looking at it like when I heard folks like talking about it and stuff like really like this is a goddamn movie ain't nobody sitting up there recording this shit for real going through this and then they gonna make a movie out of it cause that asshole dead if it really happened <laughs> so like I was cynical about the movie from the jump the same thing with paranormal activity like and then I'm the type of person like, even though I love the Freddy franchise, I know when I'm seeing streams. I can see him. <laughs> well, now, yeah. <laughs> Definitely now. <laughs> HD is a mug. Like when that girl got, like when that girl got snatched in paranormal yeah. activity. You, you, I know when I'm seeing certain stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, like, those movies didn't appeal to me. Like the movies that came, and and, and I know I'm supposed to jump more into uh, reality. But like, like I say, it's more of a personality thing for me versus the actual movie. Cause yeah. like once I got past being, cause this concept that what scared me as a child is that Freddy Krueger come to you in your dream. Right. Yeah. That was the selling point to scare me as a child. What scared me as a child with Chucky is because I had a my buddy. <laughs> I had to go take my tractor down to the uh, shop and get it worked on. Bubba said he'll have it for Monday. <laughs> so, uh, don't have to wait. Tractor's gonna have to wait till Monday. What you guys talking about? Scary movies? What about them hills have eyes there? Them, them my cousins. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they my, my cousins. Devil rejects. I know them. Oh my god, I bro! All I know all of them. I used to shoot pool with them down at the uh, uh, the, hey. the place down there. I just thought, I they just some crazy some bitches, man. I tell you that. Oh my god! Thought, uh, What's woo. up? Oh god! All three of the VHS movies. Oh yeah, wrong turn. Yeah. Like what? Well, don't take you a wrong turn down there to uh, the place. Uh, the motherfucker's gonna get you. <laughs> take you wrong turn down there. No, for real. I mean, when they started showing them on Netflix, the uh, v, they, the uh, VHS films, where you have to videotape and see what's going on. Oh yeah, right. Like the Ring and all that stuff. I, not that. The Ring it's is definitely. It's like another. This- Movie was the two fairy and uh like uh what, what was the dead silence uh like what else like I didn't care for the ring movies like I guess I had got to an age where I was just too cynical for certain movies desensitized and they didn't bother me so much what, what does what does the what does cynical mean can you spell that please. <laughs> I ain't got time to break that down for inbred people. But, uh, <laughs> I, I just I, I got I'm to a you what there, boy. You using all them big words. <laughs> you can sleep with your cousin. Hey, it's your mama. Gonna, your we not gonna talk about that on the show. Is your okay. mama? Is your mama your auntie? And your dad is your uncle. And don't your dad? talk. You don't talk about Sally May. Keep her name out your mouth. Or grab my damn shotgun. All right, man. Anyway, uh, <laughs> tell you that. Tell you that. Uh, like real talk, being honest though, like I was like me personally, I look for the comedy in horror movies. Even in the Jason, even in the Friday the Thirteenth remake, 
which I hated the Nightmare on Elm Street remake because it didn't have any comedy in it. And the Friday the 13th remake, it was funny to me because dude was running. Jason took an axe and just threw it <laughs> and caught him in the back with it. Like he would do an actual axe throwing like a Viking and hit him in the back with it. And I thought that hilarious. Like I said, I don't know what these things say about me personally as a person, but in horror movies, I look for the comedy. That's why I hated Child, the new Child Play movie. There wasn't any comedy. Natira said, Natira said, you hate everything. Uh, <laughs> so Natira and Chad said, you hate everything. My dude hates everything. Like, I don't care for like, 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 like old, Like an old boomer like myself. Yeah, I don't like nothing. <laughs> Man, I really, I really, when it comes to certain stuff, when you take the comedy out of the, like horror movies, I really don't like even, even movies. Like I would find stuff funny in certain stuff, just so I can enjoy the movie because I, I get more enjoyment out of out of a comedy than I do. Like a movie can be dead ass trash, but if it got elements of comedy in it, I can enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, just for, just for, just for kicks, how high really, when you watch how high it's really a trash ass movie, but it's funny as hell. Yeah. The scary movie franchise is trash as hell, but it's funny. Yeah. So it what was... would you cast? What would you put Ghostbusters in? Would that be horror or would that be comedy? Because the Ghostbusters, first one. Ghostbusters is all awesome. <laughs> One end. Uh, Not in your first remake. Will you play? Will you play? Their Ghostbusters is a great American cinema. <laughs> the tears said, watch them say trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, all the Ghostbusters are comedies to me, man. Like, I enjoy the first two Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I'm I waiting think- on this, this Ghostbusters we were supposed to get this summer, which yeah. I know it is not based around being the comedy. But I'm pretty sure you got some comedic elements to it. <laughs> to you, probably. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even <laughs> even um, uh, um, strange things had comedic elements to it. Yeah. All right, man. Um, I haven't seen some Stranger Things in my life. <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna get ready to we're gonna get ready to to wrap this issue of Nerdful Podcast. We appreciate and thank all of you guys for tuning in to the show on Twitch. Um, we hit affiliate, so we do have a sub button now. Uh, emotes are in the works. Badges are in the works, so you guys will be seeing that very soon. If you do, guys, do have uh, uh, I'm about to say Twitch Prime, but that's Amazon Prime. Uh, if you guys have Amazon Prime, uh, you get a free sub to us once a month or any of your favorite streamers. And uh, yeah, man, we will catch you guys yeah, on um, each... what what I missed. Shout what I missed? out to Girl, shout something. Um, Darren, our oh, guest yeah. alumni. Yeah, he yeah. Um, won he won an award for a short film. Oh, that's what's up. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to Darren Lee Campbell. Um, he, was on the show. he won the cinema. Congratulations, man! Fantastic. Award. Congratulations, um, that's buddy. Hard short. Congrats. Hey. Congratulations, you know, buddy. Since we had somebody in the chat saying that I always say trash and I hate everything, <laughs> one show soon, I'm going to do my most hated and trash ass list of all <laughs> things I find trash and all things I find hate Dope. in media and entertainment. Dope. I need oh, you to God. give me a, I need you to give me a trash counter, okay? Give me a trash counter. I want to count this. Your trash can. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll, 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 I can do that for it, brother. Okay. All right, man. We're going to catch you guys on the next one, man. We'll catch you guys on next week on issue 159. And we out. And remember, always buy John Deere.